My name is Sam and I work with Fairy God Boss. Fairy God Boss is the largest career community for women and our platform supports women throughout their careers with free resources like company reviews, job listings, webinars with various experts like Carrie here, virtual recruiting events, and a community where users can be honest about their triumphs and failures, either as themselves or anonymously. So welcome to our latest installment of our new discovery series. I see somebody's joining from Ontario. That's a bit farther from New York. Thank you for being here today. Before we get started, we will be recording this and sending it out as a follow-up. So if you miss anything, feel free to rewatch it in the email that comes out. We'll also be taking questions throughout the webinar. So if you have anything on your mind, feel free to either leave it in the chat box or in the Q&A where you can leave questions as yourself or anonymously. And both uh, features you'll find at the bottom of your screens right now. Here with me today is Carrie. Carrie is an architect with more than 20 years of expertise, leading project teams through the development of design and construction documents and coordinating the work of the consultant team. She's a senior associate at Buyer Blinder Bell Architects and planners in New York City, and she's currently leading the team for a renovation project for the Stephen A. Schwartzman Building for the New York Public Library, a multi-phase intervention into one of New York's most beloved buildings. Carrie is also the co-chair of the American Institute of Architects New York Chapter Women in Architecture Committee. Thank you so much for being here today, Carrie. Hi, glad to join you. So let's just start off with the basics. What is it exactly that you do at your current job? So at my current job, um, and I, I guess I can just talk about the, the project I'm working on, because it is, it's probably one of the most complicated projects I've ever worked on. Um, so I am, my title is Executive Project Architect, um, and I have a couple of project architects under me. So what that means is um, I sort of oversee uh, the development of all the documents and uh, the packages um, so I don't know if people are familiar, but the, the, the project is the, the building with the lions outside. Uh, <laughs> um, but it's a big building. It's about 800,000 square feet. Uh, we are not renovating the entire building. It is, um, as Sam said, it's, it's one of New York's most beloved buildings, and a lot of people care very much about it. And um, so we are doing a very selective renovation. So what we we do at the beginning of a project like that is we do um, an exhaustive um, survey of the building. And um, from that, we work with the contractor to do um, uh, probes, which means we open up walls and floors to see what the construction is. Because the, um, the, they're, they're, for this project, there were existing historic drawings from uh, when the building was originally built in 1911. Um, so with all of that information from the probes and existing uh, drawings, we, um, we start our plans. And from there, uh, we also worked with a design architect. Um, it's a Dutch firm called Mechanu. Uh, they specialize in libraries, uh, Bayer Blender Bell. Um, we are known for doing historic renovation work and historic preservation work, which is uh, one of the reasons why um, we were brought in to this project. Um, so at the beginning, there is a phase called concept design. And um, this is when you, know, you go through a lot of different uh, iterations. Um, you kind of throw out a lot of different ideas on what can work. Uh, we work very closely with clients um, and present to them. Um, and so concept design, uh, depending on the project, can last a couple weeks or a couple months. Um, from concept design, you move on to schematic design, where you start to really flesh out those, uh, the concept designs. Um, after that, it's design development. Uh, then we go into construction documents, which is what we're on right now. And that's when we work with our consultants, and we figure out how, um, how to communicate to the contractor uh, how, to, how to implement our um, design and the, the design intent. Got it. So about how long do you expect this project to take you? And is that kind of the average for projects or does it completely vary? It completely varies. So this project, we are finishing up our documents in February. Um, and that is for what is phase two of this project. But um, like I said, this is a very large project. Um, some projects 
have a very quick turnover. So if you're working in uh, retail, because um, every type of space you can imagine, um, an architect is involved. Um, so if you, any shop you go into, uh, because the, the owners of those projects, they want to get in right away, um, those projects can last a couple, couple of months. Um, versus, you know, some larger projects can go on for um, a couple of years, uh, depending on the phasing, uh, depending on um, deadlines, like some projects, like um, schools, um, those are always tied to the school schedule. So the construction has to finish at a certain date and you kind of work backward from there. Um, there's also residential where, in those projects you work very closely with the client because it's, it's somebody's home um, and people are very particular uh, about where they live. I'm sure. Uh, so, you know, it, it, there's a range um, depending on what kind of projects uh, you're working on. Got it. So now it seems like you're involved in pretty much every step of the process. Is it a pretty even split or are there certain parts where you're very heavy handed and doing everything that's part of that step? Or are you just kind of overseeing and make sure all the teams are functioning correctly? My main job is to oversee uh, the team and make sure things are moving along with the schedule. Um, but I also have um, a lot of technical knowledge, so I will help people develop details. I will sort of, because a lot of what my job is is mentoring also, um, where I, you know, I have 20 plus years experience, so I have worked on multiple uh, phases of project development, different types of um, market sectors, different types of, um, you know, details, whether it's, you know, I've worked on museums, I've worked on, you know, small galleries, I've worked on houses, I've worked on libraries now, and higher education. So, um, yeah, so I'd say my main job is mentoring people so that, you know, eventually they can um, do what I do. Got it. Okay, let's take a step backwards. So how did you actually get to where you are today? Did, was architecture something you always knew you wanted to do and you studied in college? Was it something you came to later in your career? How did you get where you are today? So I um, took a class in high school um, called architectural drafting. And I was, uh, I think it was a sophomore in high school and I just really loved it. And we went from drawings, we built models, um, and it was a really good combination of art skills and also math and science. And so from there I decided that's what I wanted to do. Um, and that's what I wanted to study in college. And so from there, um, you know, I went through the whole college application process. Uh, I studied at uh, Virginia Tech um, which is down in southwestern Virginia. Uh, it's one of the best architecture schools in the country. Um, now with the architecture education, there's a couple of different approaches. Um, so schools like Virginia Tech have a five-year bachelor's degree. And this is what's known as your first professional degree. Um, from that, you can um, then, uh, after taking all your exams, which I'll get to, um, you can be an architect. <laughs> Um, some people choose to um, go to a four-year school um, and you can get a Bachelor of Science in Architecture. Um, but those programs do not let you uh, eventually get your architecture license. You do then have to go on and get a master's. Um, so I think it depends on, like, if you know you want to be an architect in high school, I, I would recommend you go the five-year route. If you don't, and you want to try different things, it, it may be useful to, to um, you know, go and get a liberal arts education and then go on and get your master's later. Um, so once you get your professional degree, um, whether that's the five-year bachelor's or a three-year master's degree, um, you then have to go through a series of exams um, that are offered by NCARB, which is a national board um, that runs the testing. And I think now it is uh, six exams. When I took my exams um, about 15 years ago, uh, there were nine. Um, and they've, you know, they've been, it's, it's, and these days it's offered on the computer and you can schedule these exams whenever you want. Um, they're at, you know, testing centers uh, that are, there's a couple in New York City. I'm sure that's similar um, in other parts of the country. 
Um, it used to be, before I took my exams, it was offered um, once a year. Hmm. When you took it at the same time, <laughs> if you didn't pass, you had to wait a year. So it's a lot easier these days to get your license. Got it. Um, that makes a lot of sense. And oh my gosh, just taking it that one one time a year, that would, uh, and waiting the entire other year, just having to study and think about what you might have yeah. done wrong. Oh my goodness, the anxiety. Um, okay, so let's get back into kind of talking about what you do now. So I know you said you're working, you know, on the New York Public Library project and kind of what is your day to day look like? We touched on big picture, but every single day, what are you doing? So um, I go to a lot of meetings. <laughs> um, and it, I mean, it does vary day by day. Uh, so like on Mondays, we have a lot of internal meetings where we have team check-ins. Um, you know, parts of the project are also uh, signage. So we have a graphic design department. We check in with them, uh, make sure everything is um, coordinated with the architecture. Um, we also have meetings um, every other week with our consultants, so all the engineers, because it's, you know, it's not just the architect. Um, there's, a, there's a structural engineer, um, there are mechanical, electrical, and plumbing engineers, and so the mechanical, that's all your, your air conditioning and your heating. Um, and, you know, you want to make sure that it's all carefully coordinated with the architecture. Um, we have meetings with the clients to present our ideas, because uh, you want to keep the client updated um, on what's going on, you know, where we are with um, the schedule. Um, so when I'm not in meetings, I um, review drawings. Uh, so I ask the team to print out things um, for me to review, make, to make sure that um, technically they're correct, and also that um, what we're developing meets with the design intent. Um, so, so I don't uh, at this point in my career I don't draw a lot in the um, on the documents. I do I do a lot of sketching um, by hand. Um, to communicate either the design intent or um, a technical detail or, um, you know, just to help people figure things out. But um, other people on the team, um, we use a program called Revit. Uh, this is a 3D model um, and it also will uh, produce our, the plans, the sections, the elevations, all the details. Um, it does have a 2D component in it. It's a pretty powerful drafting tool um, where before, and, and a lot of projects, um, if they're not done in Revit, they're done in AutoCAD or some other 2D drafting program. And there are also um, other 3D programs other than Revit. Um, some people in the office will do renderings and that's an, another um, different set of hardware, usually either uh, uh, Rhino uh, they all have very interesting names. <laughs> um, yeah, there's there's a lot of software um, used these days. Like people don't really draft uh, by hand anymore. And oh, that's no. I don't think I've ever drafted by hand. So <laughs> um, it's been by computer for a very long time. Interesting. And now I kind of had this question before, but so when you're looking to study architecture and going into it. Do you have to specialize in it? Like, are you specialized in a certain type of building or type of architectural project? Or is it, once you have your degree, you can kind of do anything? You can kind of do anything. Um, in school, uh, they don't really specialize. Um, I know in the five-year programs, you'll have your thesis, um, where you work on one project all year. Uh, all year. Mm -hmm. um, but that doesn't really kind of fix what, who you are as an architect. I think you, you don't really know until you get out in the working world. So I started out in residential, but found that it, it was not really for me. Um, and I started working on um, a, a project. Uh, it was the School of Architecture for City College. Um, and I found that I really liked working on um, higher education projects. But you know, even that, you're, you're never you're never really locked in because I, like I said, I've worked on, you know, universities, I've worked on museums, I'm now working on a library. There's, um, you know, there's, there are some specialties, like people who do hospitals tend to do hospitals because that is mm -hmm. very, very technical. Um, and some people do specialize 
um, in museums. So, I mean, it's really up, up to you. Um, if you want to try different um, types of uh, project types, uh, you know, that, that is definitely possible. And I think, you know, working at a, a large firm, BBB has about 200 people. Uh, in the New York office, we have three studios. So I'm in the Higher Education and Cultural Projects studio. Uh, we also have a residential studio. Um, and we have a historic preservation and interior studio. Um, so there are people, um, interior architects, that uh, do strictly interiors. And it's a, it, there are similar, similar skills, but they also have different skills um, as far as um, finishing details and furniture details. And they're also um, very skilled in selecting um, finishes and knowing the technical aspects of finishes because that's that's all tied to the the building code which we all mm -hmm. know interesting so that's kind of cool that you can kind of hop around uh you know for lack of a better word if you really want to you want to try some sort of new project out and that kind of brings me to my next question which is why do you like working you know in this industry what are your favorite things about it and maybe why would you recommend it to other people whether it is just because of the creative flexibility you know if there are flexible hours really great salary um, just the ability to be creative every single day what do you like about it so i what i really like about it is once the building is built it is there <laughs> and see it and it's it's just there is a physical manifestation of your work um i also like working for projects that are for the public i think it's 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 one of the greatest services architects provide is um improving public space um so and as, as far as your other question about uh flexibility i think it, it um it definitely depends on where you work um, some firms are very good at uh, working with people um, and uh, striving for that work-life balance, and some are not. And I think, you know, you can find out, uh, you know, how offices, how the office culture is at different firms by talking um, to people. There's also uh, sites like Glassdoor um, where you can really find out um, like either if you're already in the field or if you're looking to get into it, um, you can learn a lot by looking at things like Glassdoor or um, I think what else is out there, um, you know, LinkedIn, you could probably, um, you know, contact some architects uh, that way if you were looking to get into the business. Um, or at um, the, a, a lot of cities have uh, an AIA, which is the American Institute of Architects. Uh, most cities have a chapter. Um, so, and in New York City, they have the Center for Architecture, um, where it's a great resource um, if you want to learn more about architecture or how to get into architecture. Um, you know, they, they're they're a good resource to go, go talk to. You already answered my next question. It was going to be exactly what kind of resources can people look for if they want to learn more? And in addition to that, any you know specific networking events they should maybe start going to? Any people putting on free courses that they should look for? So I think there's also some some other good um, web uh, sites that you can go to. So there's Archetizer. Um, what else is there? Oh my God, sorry, I'm blanking. But you know, if you Google just like you know architecture websites, you will find things like Architizer. All the magazines also have websites. Um, there's Architecture Magazine. There's Architectural Record. Um, some of the if you want to look into um, you know current design, there's things like Domus. Um, so that there's a lot of um, publications and, and things that you can um, look at. Um, so, sorry, what was your, the other question? It was just any resources, any free like career, you know, um, people putting on like free webinars to teach them more intro courses, kind of stuff like that. Yeah, I think for as far as how to get into architecture, um, you know, I think some, some universities might offer um, sort of free classes. I mean, because when, when I was in college, um, we did not, my school was not into providing um, AutoCAD classes. <laughs> they did not think it was 
That's where <laughs> what we should be working on. We should be working on developing our design um, skills, not so much drafting. Um, so when I graduated, uh, it was hard to find a job because I did not have any computer skills. So now that, so um, at the time I was living in San Francisco and I took a, um, you know, classes at Berkeley. They had classes in um, AutoCAD at the time. Um, but I think there are, um, you know, you can look in to see what universities are um, offering. You know, maybe uh, it might be possible to audit a class if you just wanted to see if, it, well, let me see if this is for me before uh, going through, you know, applying to architecture school and, um, you know, just to see if it's something you'd like to get into before you kind of dive right in. Um, awesome. So I have a few more questions, but I just want to take a pause right here and let everybody know if you do have any questions of your own, make sure to leave them in the chat or the Q&A so we can ask them. We're getting short on time already, so I want to make sure that I don't miss any that you may have. Um, so I have a, another question, and this kind of relates to what we were talking about before the webinar started. But I think it's really interesting to let attendees know this is you work with so many different people on your projects. We were talking about how you work with security consultants all the time. So could you maybe tell us a little bit more about the different types of people you work with? Because it clearly see it's clear that communication skills are very necessary for this job. Yes, they are. Um, <laughs> so I guess it's uh, you know, like I said earlier, the, you know, the architect really provides the design intent, but um, when it comes down to, um, you know, the engineering and sort of the stuff that goes in the ceilings and, you know, the stuff that goes in the walls, we need uh, consultants to, um, to sort of flesh out that part of the project. So, um, and also on larger projects, we will work with a lighting designer um, because they, they have a very specific skill set because um, there there will be you know code required um, uh, lighting uh, levels uh, that are required for projects and they do all the calculations. Um, there's your mechanical engineer um, who will provide the right heating and cooling for your building. Uh, there's the electrical engineer who lays out all the, the power requirements and you know sees what's coming in from Con Ed or wherever your electrical service is and they um, help route that through the building. There's plumbing, um, which you know your sinks, uh, tubs, toilets, all that that uh, things and they size the, the piping. Um, there are civil engineers um, that were they do the drainage um, um, that, that's mostly, at least in my experience, on city projects. Uh, they help us with the drainage, designing sidewalks. Um, there's geotech engineers. So if you have to excavate, so if you have a cellar um, or a basement, um, you need to know where the, the, the there's always groundwater. Um, you need to know where that is. Um, the geotech engineers help with soil and help determine what kind of foundation a building has. Um, there are IT consultants, so all your computers, all that stuff, um, they, they help with that and providing how many uh, data lines you need. There's um, security consultants who decide on cameras and um, card readers because, uh, you know, a lot of buildings require a lot of security. You want to make sure, and you want to not only make sure things are locked, if somebody does get into the building, a card reader sort of will tell you who got into that room. Um, what else? Uh, elevators. <laughs> there are engineers that work strictly on what's called vertical transportation. That can be elevators, escalators, dumb waiters. Um, what else? Uh, there are landscape architects um, that are the design professionals who design the the outside. Um, and even in New York City, they design terraces with us. Um, they'll design parks things like that. Um, I once worked on a project where we had a, it was a, there was a planetarium as part of the project and there is a specific uh, consultant that works on planetariums. Also, um, <laughs> the project also had a butterfly vivarium and there was a consultant for that. So wow. if you can think of something, there is a consultant for it. 
you work with literally everybody. <laughs> yeah. And so there's a lot of allied fields. Um, so if, you know, if, if you think, well, you know, I, I, I like um, buildings and construction, but you, you may not think, well, maybe I don't want to be an architect. There are plenty of fields that you could also go into that are, um, I'm not going to say they're just as interesting, but they are, um, they're, they're, you know, they're necessary for the building process. Well, that brings us to um, a question from Kristen in our audience, actually, that works out perfectly. She asks, what sort of path would you, you suggest for someone with an engineering background to get into architecture? So I actually used to work for somebody who started out as an engineer. Um, and he was a mechanical engineer. And so he ended up, uh, he had a bachelor's degree and he ended up going and getting his master's. Um, and so that uh, if you don't have an architecture degree, a master's is three years of um, studies. So there you go, Kristen, go get your master's. <laughs> um, another question from our audience. What if you're in your late 30s, early 40s with an idea to build a container home complex? How and where would I start? So I think essentially I have an idea for a project. How do I get going on it? So I guess, I, so you need to find an architect. Um, the best way of doing that is if you, you know, word of mouth, you, you know, you could see if you know anybody who has worked with an architect. Um, that's also a pretty, that sounds like a pretty big um, development. So you may want to reach out to a developer, um, but you can also reach out to your local uh, AIA and um, see if they have a recommendation for architects that would do that type of work. Great advice. Well, thank you so much. All right, um, our last call for questions, get them in now. Um, otherwise, we're going to wrap up. And like I said, this recording will be sent out to you in an email following the webinar. We'll also be including a great article with lots of tips and resources that Carrie mentioned today. So you can read through that and access anything that you need to start your architecture journey. Um, so with that, I wanna say thank you so much to everybody for joining us today. Thank you so much, Carrie, for being here. Really appreciated speaking thank with you. Thank you, this was fun. Thanks everybody. Hope you have a great rest of your days. Bye. Bye.